In this video, we're going to take a look at pathway problems in Pascal's triangle. Most pathway problems can be done in two ways. The first method you are familiar with, which is the fundamental counting principle and permutations. So for example, let's say that I am at A and I want to get to B. How many paths going down and to the right are there from A to B? Now what we can do, remember, is to count the number of blocks going down and count the number of blocks going to the right. Now by blocks, I don't mean the squares. I actually mean city blocks, as if these line segments were roads. So if you recall, we take n factorial, where n is the total number of blocks and we divide it by a factorial and b factorial, <coughs> excuse me, where a and b are the number of blocks in each direction. So in this example, we have one, two, three blocks to the right, one, two, three blocks going down. So there are a total of six line segments to get from A to B. Divide by three factorial to the right and three factorial going down. So we can simplify this uh, by hand or you can use a calculator and we get a total of 20 paths. Now before I introduce Pascal's triangle, let's see if we can actually just do this by counting. So how many different paths are there going down and to the right um, are there at each intersection from A to B? So let's pretend that we just go from A to this point here. So going from here to here, there's only one pathway to get to here. So we write a little one to show that. To get to here, there's still only one straight pathway. So there's one. To get to this point, still only one straight pathway to get to here. So there is one. And that's the same going down as well. So we go down, there's one. Going down, there's still only one pathway to go down. And to get to this point, there's only one way to get to this point. What about this point here? So I can go right and then down, or I can go down and then to the right. So there are two pathways here. What about this next point? Well, I can go all the way to, to the right and then go down, so that's one pathway, or I can go right, down, and then right. So that's another pathway. Or I can go down and then continually go right till I get to this point. So there are three paths. One, two, and then three. So see if you can figure out all the other points of intersection and how many paths there are to get to each of these intersection points. So pause the video now and see if you can figure it out. If you count in a systematic way, you should be able to get 20 paths. So there are 10 paths to get to this point, 10 paths to get to this point. So to get to here, we need 10 from here and 10 from there, which gives us a total of 20 paths, which is what I got before. Now, analyzing this rectangular array a little bit more carefully, we can see that to get to all of these on the side is always just one. To get to two, we have one plus one. To get to three, we had one path from here and then two paths from here, so one plus two is three, and so on. So four, it was one plus three. To get to six, we have three plus three. So to get to each successive point on this array, we need to add the two previous numbers. And this brings us to Pascal's triangle. So Pascal's triangle is a triangular array of numbers developed by a mathematician named Blaise Pascal. And how it starts is that in the first row, we have one. In the second row, we have one and one. In the third row, 
the outer edges are 1 and 1, and we have a middle number, which we get by adding 1 plus 1, so we get 2. The fourth row, again, we start with 1 on the ends. To get the numbers in the middle, we go 1 plus 2 to give us 3. 2 plus 1, we get 3. Fifth row, we have 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. 3 plus 3, 6. 3 plus 1 is 4. And then 1 at the end. So you can continue in this fashion, adding the two previous numbers above to get the number below. And you can actually see that this triangle that we had up here is actually located right over in here. Now also notice that the number of terms in each row also matches which row it is. So in the first row there's only one term, in the second row there are two terms and three terms, four terms, and so on. So the row number will also tell us how many terms there are in each row. Let's take a look at a couple more examples. So in this one here, how many paths going down and to the right are there from A to B? Now in this first one, we can actually use the fundamental counting principle and permutations, or we can do it using Pascal's triangle. So let's try both so you can see the similarities. So we know this is all one and one going down. So we add these two ones, we get two. So this is three, four, five, six, seven. And then going down, it's the same thing. So this will be three and four. We get six, six plus four is 10. 10 plus five is 15. 15 plus six is 21. 21 plus seven is 28. So the last row, four plus six is 10. 10 plus 10, 20, 20 plus 15, 35, 35 plus 21 is 56, and finally 56 plus 28 is 84. Now if we wanted to do, uh, use the fundamental counting principle and permutations, we can see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six blocks going to the right and three going down. So there's nine factorial, divided by three factorial times six factorial. And when you type this out, you'll also find that you get 84. Now this next example beside here in part B, we can't actually use um, fundamental counting principle and permutations because the block is not perfect. We have gaps here, as you can see in these two squares. Okay, So we actually have to use Pascal's triangle to help us. So all along the top, these will be one, and one all along as well here. To get this point here, this will be one plus one, which is two, two plus one, which is three, and then three plus one, we're gonna get four. Now be careful, you have to include every intersection. So here's another intersection here. Now we don't include two to add up to this point because there's no line joining from two all the way across. So to get to this point, if we think about it, there's only one pathway. So going down and then to the right. So there's only one. So we can't backtrack because we can only go down and to the right. To get to this point, we do have one plus three, so that's gonna be four. To get here, we have four plus four, and that's gonna be eight. To get to this point here, uh, we have one, from here, one from here, so we have a total of two. And then to get to B, we have two plus eight, which gives us a total of 10 paths. All right, finally, one more interesting thing about Pascal's triangle. We can actually relate the combinations to Pascal's triangle. So if I wanted to list the eighth row in Pascal's triangle using combinations, you can see that this was the eighth row, which I had written down from above. Now, if we want to use combinations, we can think of the one as something C0. So we want to choose zero items. 
and we're going to choose 7. Notice that it's 7 because 7C0 is going to give me 1. Of course, I could also use 8C0, but you're going to notice that there's going to be a pattern. So the other way to choose 1 is to have 7C7, which means that I have 7 items, and I'm going to choose all 7 of them. If I have 7 items and I choose 0, there's one way to choose 0. To get 7 items, I have 7 C1. So there are seven ways for me to choose one item from seven items. And if you keep following this, this will be 7C2, 7C3, 7C4, C 4 7 c 5 and 7C6. And you can convince yourself of this uh, by plugging these combinations into your calculator and seeing that you will actually get the number in Pascal's triangle. So to find the nth row, notice that this is the eighth row, but we begin with one less than the row. So this will be n minus one, C, and we start with zero. <coughs> Excuse me. The next one, notice they're all seven, so it's gonna be n minus one, C1, and then n minus one, C2, and so on until we get to the very last term, which is n minus one, C n minus one. So if that's the last term, the one previous to that will be n minus one, C, and then we choose n minus two. So one less than the very end. So knowing this, see if you can find the 11th row in Pascal's triangle. So pause the video now. So because we're starting with the 11th row, we're gonna start with 10 as our first number, as our n, and then c0, all the way up to 10, c10. And you notice that, you probably have noticed this already, but every row in Pascal's triangle is always going to be symmetrical. Now the last thing I want to do, which is a little bit more specific, instead of listing the whole row, how do you find a specific term? So let's say I'm asking you to find the third term in the sixth row. So notice that this is the first term, but we said it was zero. The second term, our R value is one. The third term, our R value is two. So if I want to find the third term in the sixth row, the sixth row means that we need to go down one. So this would be five C. And because I want a third term, I also need to move down one, and that will be 5c2, and this will equal 10. So to summarize that, to find the term in Pascal's triangle, we're going to use r minus one, c, t minus one, if you wanna generalize it. So r is going to represent our row, and the t will represent the term. So in which place that term is. 